A movement isn't anything that gets started by somebody ordaining it or some public official saying it's time for, you, for someone to do something. It is a rare moment in time when uh, a spark is lit. If people forget that without those foot soldiers, the movement would not have happened, then they have totally lost the focus of, that, of what happened. There are a lot of people that died. There are a lot of people who were injured, uh, maimed. Um, the countless people that were lynched Yet and, and nobody knows their names, yet and still it was the outrage over those issues that caused people to say enough's enough. Thousands of students in this jail, their lives, their livelihood, their everything, be put on the line for this movement. Deep in love. I believe, the people I interviewed were heroic. They put their lives on the line for their beliefs and principles. They faced and stood up to all types of bigotry and violence, yet they pushed on believing that what they were doing would make a better life for themselves and future generations. The stands they made changed the social and political path of our country. There are 50 or 60 cars following us, shotguns hanging out of the window. I made a sudden turn, somebody shot through my windshield. There were 87 of us or something arrested that day and we all, you know, were put in the paddy wagon together and all taken to jail together and there was a big feeling of unity. I think we were probably singing and possibly even joking. And But then when once we were arrested, we were separated. I was surrounded by cops from every direction. The cop comes in the car and says, get out. And this guy is holding a shotgun to my neck. When you put on your suit and tie and you call yourself marching downtown to make a peaceful protest because some of your fellow students have been arrested for sitting in at a lunch counter, and suddenly all hell breaks loose with tear gas and dogs and police chasing you, that's, that's not a very pleasing or a reassuring experience. But it helps you to, it helps to solidify your commitment. Even as late as the 1960s, that most whites felt uh, entitled to be able to be violent uh, with, with, in racial situations, that uh, white juries would never convict them, most white sheriffs wouldn't arrest them. And the FBI, uh, until um, probably in the middle 60s, wasn't uh, um, being as attentive as they could have been. You saw these men putting on that gas mask. They came toward us, beating us with nightsticks, bull whips, tramping us with horses, releasing the tear gas. I was hit in the head by a state trooper with a nightstick. I thought I saw death. I thought I was going to die. I thought it was my last protests. The beautiful thing was we were never working for black people, that the movement was always working for all people, but helping to release the hold that the in injustice had on those of us who were black. But it was never an anti-white movement. It was always a movement for democracy and peace. Marching.